so good morning uh, my name is mayur shah from wipro i i drive the global uh, practice for data center and hybrid cloud uh, based out of india and and as my as my role is to alliance with intel in a proactive innovation what we do together so we are in the partnership more than 6 years now and and we have come a long way uh, in our uh, pursuits what we have done together so uh, with with that one of the uh, most in, uh, important activities which we started together last year september this time almost a year back uh, which was on to uh, landing into the initiative of this sort of benchmarking the uh, the workloads critical workloads likes of databases stateful workloads uh, into hyperscalers and and we all know that uh, the adoption of hybrid cloud or public cloud is is increasing day by day and and we are witnessing that uh, as wipro service provider in most of our deals which we are into uh, everybody is into hybrid cloud with that it it also brings in so so a uh, lot of other challenges and and i uh, as part of this engagement uh, with intel we we write a lot of thought leadership papers articles and and solution uh, deep solutions in each of these areas whether it's a multi hybrid cloud uh, solution based on a particular uh, container telco many other solutions which are available as in our partner sites i i keep writing blogs uh, so you can you can uh, take a look at the the section from uh, wipro website on on my uh, page myu.sha uh, so so uh, feel free to do that so surfonomics is is what we call uh, for our optimization uh, uh, optimization and assurance on on our solution in hybrid cloud and largely on the public cloud so we use uh, surfonomics powered by densify and other tools primarily densify uh, is our uh, approved tool and and I'm, i was glad to hear that intel is also uh, has partnership with densify and customized that so that matched really well with our and surfonomics is our go to market uh, uh, strategy for going into so without wasting and then uh, we we started this engagement for for specifically doing tweaking optimizing the the images of os images in a in a very automated manner uh, optimized cloud images so all we know that on the hybrid cloud journey we have key challenges of uh, when we when we adopt public cloud it's it's really great in terms of agility and and scalability flexibility uh, what we get and the time to market uh, uh, for time to transformation everything is good but it it's all all coming with uh, with cost pressure and and risk associated with when we migrate whether our Uh, performance would be intact when we go which kind of t-shirts which would choose and and so on and so forth and as we grow as we scale into the the hyperscaler the cloud uh, do do we guarantee all the standards the the maturity standards the consistency in terms of uh, our processes and standards uh, those are the challenges which we get into apart from the life cycle management and hence along with intel we we thought we we will get into a structured program where we would do a detailed engineering and benchmarking process for having a fully automated image creation uh, for for all the kind of workload and we started systematically from mysql postgres now we are doing on microsoft sql on infrastructure as a service and then following by platform as a service so what what do we bring in so we bring in two aspects one before we get into the cloud you have an informed decision of where you should go so we have clearly done the engineering aspect of the the and and selected multiple uh, t-shirts in in a particular hyperscaler all three of them and now we have a, a clear results of what workload to be taken uh, taken for what kind of transaction per minute orders per minute so we 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 take care of the life cycle when before moving onto the cloud you are clearly aware of where exactly what what size you should do and hence you optimally size the efficiencies come by default in the starting of the process second when you are into the process uh, even though you would have sized it uh, we are having our surfonomics powered by intel oci and densify make sure that you have an ai ml engine which will give you a, a opportunity to give performance assurance over the life cycle 
and and when you doing the bc migration from on premise to cloud uh, you have a clear business case creation uh, data point uh, which which makes sure the it it aligns with the the uh, business strategy and of course the cost saving and and the kind of benchmarks we have done we will cover that as part of the uh, the journey astonishing process um, overall cost saving so while the exact cloud image gives that benefit we also get most of this benefit uh, in the life cycle one first impact on the oci only having the oci we have got a lot of advantage of leveraging the underneath technology and efficiency is gain cost saving on over and above with the densify and the life cycle management so this is the crux of the solution i wanted to spend most of my time here uh, and and everything else is supporting what and and supporting the claim what we have done so how it de delivers the value the complete life cycle end to end creating the image in a in a uh, ci cd process so wipro is a service provider for many customers and for us it's distinct for every customer the tool sets everything vary so this program takes care of a methodology in which we can clearly in infuse our uh, oci image creation uh, process which is completely fully automated end to end uh, by using terraforms the the cloud in it hammer db ansible uh, this is a complete package what we have tested and and are ready to uh, move in integration with densify and and the overall gtm surfonomics we are good to go and as a process we can create the image uh, which is completely uh, optimized tested and and certified and the process also takes care of the life cycle management which means any any updates and and cd part of the continuous deployment part of the process has been taken care by our um, cd process of the image creation right so this is this has been fully tested and and has, uh, we have tried in our customers the results when we are doing the testing uh, you can see you know while it is a detailed one in each of these hyperscaler whether aws gcp and azure we have done side by side workloads and scaled them from say 8 cpu to 64 cpu and 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 of course the memory in in that scale and have given the benchmark and recommendation how it scales when you do when you should do scale out and when you should do scale up and also done the comparison of how the orders per minute uh, relates to the dollars you spend at what point in time it it degrades and hence there is a trigger point where you should consider scale out instead of scale up right so very very detailed analysis of each one of them so we have we had released the paper of uh, mysql uh, which is ga for everyone to see uh, we have already done the the final final uh, clearance of postgres and now My microsoft sql as well so so you can see that all, all this adds to a, a lot of areas which we have a cost saving on the licensing a, a cost saving on the instances and if you if you put that densify lens on the reserved instances it gives a lot of levers for overall cost optimization and the fear what customer normally gets into the cost fear on the public cloud uh, is been taken care of however we are also working on this uh, approach onto the on premise world as well and densify today supports very well on the vmware estate etc so it becomes a hybrid story clearly so if i have to summarize what we are bringing on the table from surfonomics surfonomics as we say is is the go to market uh, strategy to go clearly to our customers getting them a data point and assurance that it's a two large companies backed by the the thought leader innovation uh, company likes of intel which is backing up giving us an access to uh, everything performance uh, toolkit benchmark uh, and the oci overall uh, methodology so moment it is been available to us we 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 give them a customer a holistic outcome for reducing the complexity of their cloud instances how can they take advantage of the scale and and self service available on onto this entire process of image management and and the cd the continuous deployment ci as well uh, leverage the uh, the performance uh, data point what we have to take the informed decision and hence give that cost optimization throughout the life cycle so i would say this is this is a summary of what we bring together as two companies uh, to go to market for our customers 
who can who can really think about strategically focusing on their engineering rather than thinking on the cost etc we will take care of that uh, in the entire life cycle optimizing them uh, as and when it it appears but uh, most importantly give them assurance of how they can run this on a most efficient manner uh, from from the performance as well as in the cost so that's about this uh, offering thank you very much so so in the q and a i have let me introduce my colleague uh, ankur ghosh from wipro who who has been instrumental from day one on this initiative and has the all uh, first hand experience of completely uh, getting it with him and his team uh, and and supported by my intel colleagues uh, amit you want to go next for introduction yep. please okay thanks hi uh, folks myself amit biswas uh, i am the pre sales uh, manager for gsi uh, technical architect uh, i've been in intel for quite some time have been part of this particular uh, optimized cloud instance journey which we began with wipro uh, they are the first ones and uh, these are the results which we have today as of now which is uh, you know publicly available for the customers so swastik part of uh, the architect team okay uh, and he has been the brain child to uh, get this going swastik yeah hi uh, thanks uh, thanks amit for the introduction so i am swastik chakravarti based out of bangalore india uh, working in the capacity of a cloud solutions architect and um, primarily it has been a nice journey with wipro working for the last uh, almost 12 months now um, and wipro has enabled us to give the shape uh, to the to the dream that we faced and and that dream is is right now uh, realized with all the data points that you have seen so uh, uh, thanks a lot for for this collaboration and with this we are opening up and breaking new grounds um, for for uh, a co collaboration as well as joint customer wins thank you My name is Athar Beg. I'm an enterprise solutions architect with uh, Rackspace Technologies Limited. Uh, my Twitter handle is Athar Beg. Um, so, um, first of all, great work that you've done because uh, obviously you need to start from a particular uh, benchmarking situation. So you you can tune your workloads obviously for your customers. But I was just wondering, have you now by going through this process now developed some sort of a library of profiles because when you do benchmarking you you're using set instances set parameters and set workloads um in the real life if as, as you know that uh, workloads can be quite varied in terms of load as well as what they are running so when they're running on your platform how do you actually ensure that each instance is then optimized based on the workload that's running um do you go on uh, do uh, ongoing training or uh, sorry tuning of that application based on some interface uh, what's your process for going through that uh, so so uh, other we and it's a great question first of all well, what what we currently see is uh, one there's an approach of having a a specific workload uh, which we have done the engineering and optimization for and and we when we when we talk about uh, microsoft Uh, or or mysql for example postgres that's one type of workload which has been tested for all the the combination uh, of what we have in the environment and 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 there is uh, a different kind of workloads pattern which we if you if you notice in this um, in the graphs what we had is the standard load high cpu all, all of those different different combination what we have covered or that particular workload which which makes us very very confident for for covering the most of those variables Uh, which which would come into the 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 real uh, scenario uh, when we talk about the the rest of other workloads which 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 would be there in the application landscape the uh, approach is to have one uh, universal uh, tuning for for the uh, for the workload which are not specific uh, databases or identified workloads which we have in the road map so uh, we wanted to create high impact to the workloads which which has the large cost pending which are all databases the stateful application who which does the analytics and things like that those are the primary uh, on top of our uh, list and and the general purpose workloads are anyway taken care from the normal tuning as well as our densify uh, optimization process so that's how our our process is we will create the impact on the low hanging and high impact ones of sort of the databases have have customer realize that 
cost savings and optimization uh, results uh, in a more visible manner. And rest all we would cover through our uh, other engine, which, is, which, which, which will take care of uh, the right sizing, uh, the performance, real-time indication, uh, switching off, such, so which, which is not in use, et cetera, et cetera, by bringing in that. And, and by all means, we, we are not wanting to touch into the area of the application side, but while we are, we are working on onto the image OS and the, the hardware tuning uh, underneath, which which makes make sure that uh, we we give them a maximum uh, bandwidth or or lanes which are which are available for them to perform. So this is my response. Um, and and Swasti, you want to add? Yeah. So a third <clears throat> couple of things uh, to I mean, to get, take a step back and a couple of things to basically first focus on is when you mentioned about the customer's uh, specific use case and uh, how the standard benchmark will be able to relate to that. Uh, and hence it is important uh, to focus on, one thing is the choice of the benchmarking harness that you are doing and how much that benchmarking harness is closely, I mean, closely uh, aligning to the kind of usage pattern of the customer's deployment, that is one. And the second thing is that every customer's applications are different, that utilization of the databases are different. So it is also important to understand the utilization metrics of CPU, memory, storage, and network. And how do you do that tuning um, in, a, in a dynamic environment? So there are two aspects we have focused on. The data points that you have seen is a part of our static optimizations which is a known set of flags that Intel has developed over a period of time, but specific to a version of MySQL, specific to a version of Linux kernel, which is running on Ubuntu or CentOS or RHEL, and then providing those optimizations as a static. But as you have rightly mentioned, that we need to also understand the customer usage pattern so what we have done is we have chosen HammerDB in place of Sysbench as a benchmarking harness and try to simulate a customer's use case because it is more of a data warehousing uh, you know, benchmark rather than just a straightforward database benchmark. So that is the second part that we have done. And the third one, as uh, Mayur was mentioning that, yeah, there are certain uh, runtime or dynamic optimizations are called for over and above this configuration. So for that, Wipro is having tools to complement that for handling the dynamic environment as well. So it is a composite package that will enable Wipro to uh, be successful in solving the customer's business problem. Thank you, it all makes sense actually. Um, it's quite a complex and interesting thing to do. So um, I'm, I'll definitely be following this one because uh, it's all very tech. Um, interesting subject, let's just say, but thank yes. you. Hi, um, I'm Gina Rosenthal, and I uh, I have a, a startup called Digital Sunshine Solutions. And my question might be a little bit more kindergarten in nature because I'm interested in the testing. If the testing was done that we're seeing the results from right now on MySQL and Linux, that means the VMs are KVM, I'm assuming. So that's what I'm interested in knowing is to go a little bit deeper into what we're actually testing here. So obviously testing VMs in a cloud and testing, I would imagine, I'm not, I'm not even sure, like what, what are you, are you testing Linux-based VMs versus um, cloud native VMs? How are you, what, what, what's actually the, the little bit lower down layer of what you're testing? Uh, so th first of all, thanks for, thanks for the question. So how did we do this testing and why did we do this testing? If we uh, look at the way uh, our customers are deploying, so one of the question comes that, uh, what is the right instance choice that I need to make? Uh, and then there is a capacity planning activity that happens. And then we arrive at any kind of typical migration discussion that what is the right instance that I should be doing? Now, once we talk about how do I define the right instance at the end of the day, that right instance is governed today by you know, either it can be a spec in spec FP rate or, uh, you know, some kind of rule of thumb or how the previous customers have deployed these workloads. What is their, uh, you know, uh, experience based on that? But here we have taken a more 
pragmatic approach to telling that, hey, we are going to provide a, a VM which does have a right transactions per minute or the new orders per minute values. And it is not based on someone else's you know, utilization data. So that is first we have identified that which instance delivers what kind of workload performance. The other thing that we have also tested is how the workload, like when you talk about MySQL, MySQL does have a different versions. Now, what is the, how the version is having an impact on the performance? So that has been tested. The subsequent to that, we are talking about, okay, what is that? You, as a rightly mentioned, Linux kernel. Linux kernel does have, you know, whether we would do 18.04, 20.04, now 21.04, how the workload varies, characterizes, Based on the work, based on the different operating system choices, and thus by having kernel, so we have taken all those things into consideration. How workloads scale, how workloads have also a dependency on the choice of storage that you do, because as you as you know that you know that for a database log file dependency to the data file dependency to the temp file, there is a serious severe dependency. So we have taken into consideration of all those dependencies the way customer will be actually deploying on the on uh, on a production environment so that all these nuances are taken into consideration as we have done this benchmark and as i mentioned earlier also it is hammer db which has been used so that it can be very closely aligned to a typical customer's deployment uh, options or the pattern and and to to arrive at a pragmatic approach for this migration uh, planning for the customers mayur any other point you would like to add here I would like to add uh, that this also actually accommodates, uh, you know, uh, the uh, as Moit uh, told previously, the, the the vertical scaling criteria. So if you are scaling, for example, uh, in AWS or from uh, 32 vCPU to 96 vCPU, that is uh, uh, three times uh, the uh, you know infrastructural resources from the perspective of CPUs and RAM. And also, if you see the uh, you know per hour utilize per per hour uh, cost of the uh, you know CPUs, it is exactly proportional three times, but are we getting three times performance? So, uh, you know, uh, so these kind of data, which uh, will help us to uh, find out where is a breaking point of our, you know, uh, you know our vertical scaling and where exactly we'll, we should stop and uh, concentrate on horizontal scaling to be able to provide the right performance for that particular uh, workload. This is Calvin Hendricks Parker. I'm with Six Feet Up. You can find me on Twitter at Calvin HP. I had a follow-up question that's related to that cost. Uh, you had mentioned during the presentation that you're trying to reduce the fear of, of the costs going into the public cloud. And, and actually, Anchor, you just brought up a good point about the fact that if I scale a single instance up three times, I basically scale up the cost three times. What else is this doing to help allay those fears in that public cloud cost? It seems like we also want to be able to make sure folks can scale down or take advantage of the elastic properties of a, of a public cloud or even an on-premise cloud promises cloud because that would make more sense for savings on costs. Is that, does this product help in those areas like in that dynamic monitoring or dynamic AI? Yes, uh, yes, Ken. So that is that is what it does. So, so it gives you an opportunity to also do uh, the first time assessment, a quick one to take your uh, current state. So if you are uh, going into Azure, like Azure gives you a toolkit or AWS gives you a, a utility to, to size your end state in, in, in the cloud, which is a preliminary surface level where you have not advantages of even scaling down if you are under underutilized on your uh, on-premise, for example. Uh, this offering will take care of that as well, uh, of sizing it properly when you are transitioning, but at the same time uh, also doing uh, with, with that AI ML work, uh, uh, platform, what, what is integrated into it, it, it will give you the uh, real-time notification as well as prediction uh, suggestions in terms of what you should do. Uh, you should switch from a particular instance to another one, which will save you the cost and give you the similar performance because you are underutilized in the current state. It will also observe the reserved instances things as well. So, so as long as you give that assurance to the clients with whom you are talking to saying that, hey, I'm covering you from the sizing, from the initial sizing, uh, which will be right sized uh, for your performance, as well as in, 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 the, in the life cycle, when, whenever is uh, required, because I'm doing the continuous train monitoring as well. So if you are not utilizing for certain days, 
or 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 periodic uh, pattern uh, we we have captured that and hence you should uh, we, we give you a a trigger uh, to 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 act automatically during those periodic things and hence saves money and this these are all this a few things apart from that there are customers who for, forget to even though decommission uh, com compute instances they they forget to remove the storage instances and things like that right and that that builds up the cost so yeah, we are saying that sometimes economics. i think that's part of their their yeah. business model is for you for, to forget so that's the economics what we will take care and hence give them an assurance of kind of uh, removing that fear that otherwise things mount they don't uh, get it immediately first initial years the tco uh, would be good because they would have just transitioned and 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 scaling there but moment they are uh, you know they they scale and and expand there and then bill starts mounting up so probably so, this this is the best way to give a, a complete package uh, along with the technology power what we can bring in from intel right yeah one more kind of question to that is you alluded to it giving you alerts and it sounds like there's still a human involved in this process is there a fully automatic orchestration could this work with kubernetes to like spin up and spin down you know pods depending on the, the workload needs or is this strictly a an alerting system that's going to give people a report no it does it does so you have a capability to integrate the trigger uh, uh based on the scenarios uh, you define and it would do so assume that there is a threshold uh, which you think you have really really optimized your sizing and and based on if it reaches this point please add one more pod yes doable so so that trigger is available depending on how comfortable are you in terms of the scale out if it's web server stateless applications go ahead and do it definitely it does so guys thank you very much it was really interactive session uh, the the journey has been enriching uh, we have learned a lot you can reach out to us for any details uh, and and we are also uh, developing the demos uh, for our customers uh, so so please reach out to me amit internally and amit if you want to uh, tell uh, conclude yeah i'll just add my final notes over here so the journey which we have embarked over here okay the cloudification of everything okay we talk about like what our value prop intel is trying to bring over here so it is like uh, the underutilized uh, data center resources instances okay people go on buying so many of instances what are we trying to do that we are trying to reduce those we are trying to make it very cost effective and also proper usage of the configurations what we are having that what this whole journey is all about in nutshell it's lot many technical in detail it takes a lot of time because for one particular workload benchmark it took us almost 3 to 4 quarters to understand the nitty gritties the nuances what it goes into so now we are at, i won't say we are like ready or mature enough there is a long journey to go there are there are hundreds of workload to be tested okay uh, and trust like uh, we would be able to come up with all the major workloads and go and at least uh, share it with the partners where they can at least scale it to the customers yeah and 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 the second one is not taken that much of time the second and third are so quick and that gives us an optimism of of scale this to multiple workloads very very soon and 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 talk like this again for the large amount of test data what we have